score button. I'm asking for points of inflection. Number line test works well for comparing things to zero. So I find the first derivative. I find the second derivative. Set the second derivative equal to zero. Factor. Build your little number line. Number line changes from positive to negative to positive. So I have two points of inflection. Yes, sir. number line always No. No. You might use the original function, you might use the first derivative, you might use the second derivative. The number line test is for comparing things to zero. You want to know where are things positive, where are things negative. That's what we want. Okay. Number five is too easy for you all. I bet most of you pick C. But here's the thing. It's not wrong. What you have to be really careful about is that with a piecewise function, which is what this guy is, there's two different parts of the graph. And for f prime of 1 to exist, you need to check the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f prime and the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f prime because you have these two different pieces. I bet what most of you did is you found the derivative of x squared plus 2 which is easy peasy, 2x, mm -hmm. and you plugged in 1 and you get 2. Yeah. Right? And this is probably what everybody did. Mm -hmm. And hey, C is the right answer. Mm -hmm. But what if when you took the derivative on the other piece, you get something that wasn't 2? One derivative is 2, the mm -hmm. other derivative is 6. Mm -hmm. Then the function's not differentiable at x equals 1 because those derivatives that are giving you different answers. That didn't happen here, so everybody kind of like without having enough information, get it right. You get a little lucky. Don't worry, that won't happen again. I'm going to raise the bar. Okay, number six ought to be K. And this is one I would expect everybody and their mama to be able to get right. And Roberto is nodding along in all the right places. He's, he's in. Number eight is K. Number eight is K. F is defined and continuous on the closed interval. F has a relative max. You have to consider both kinds of relative maxes here. There's two kinds. There's always two flavors. Okay, which of the following statements must be true? Does the derivative have to exist? Not if my max looks like this guy here. If the derivative exists, then the derivative is equal to zero. True. If the second derivative exists, then the second derivative is negative. True. But this guy here knocks out statement number one. This isn't one that I would expect lots of the friends to get right. Did anybody get this one right? If you can find the second derivative, then the second derivative is going to be negative, which means concave down. Okay. All right, miss number eight, it's not the end of the world. We'll, we'll move on. All right, number 10, G. This should be one where we're doing well again. Number 11, this is all that physics stuff that we've been talking about. 11 is C. 12, K. 12, and then 19 and 21, these are the last ones. These are both calculator after. 19 should be E. And 21 ought to be e. Okay. So please count up how many you get right out of 11. How is 21 B? At x equals 0, which the following is true, they gave you f prime. I would graph f prime. And at x equals 0, I bet that f prime is a negative number. You're below the x-axis, which means that the function is decreasing. If your derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. Okay, so count up the number you got correct out of 11. How many of y'all get 8 out of 11 or higher? We get Kaylin, we get Kevin, we get Abraham, we get Carlos. I got seven here. We got Evelyn, eight out of eleven. I would say you are on track for five. That's pretty good. I can deal with that. Okay. 
6 or 7 out of 11. Where are you guys? 6 or 7 out of 11, you're on track for 4. And I mean like out of like a scale of 1 to 5, not like 4 out of 100. Okay? If you get 5 out of 11, you're probably on track for a 3. Not a super strong 3, but a 3. I can deal with that. I would say that if you didn't get 8 out of 11 or higher, you want to spend some time today during lunch with me to make it even better. Polly Monsoto, class of 2017. Uh, funny looking guy, you guys may remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, he'll be here every Tuesday and Thursday for the rest of the year just for extra support during tutorials. Um, so, come on by. Go up. All right, so put those in the middle of the table, please. I am going to set my timer to go off at 11.17. At 11.17, we're going to start the quiz. Between now and 11.17 is our opportunity to get rocking and rolling here. All right. I already mentioned lunchtime support today. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you guys know there's a test on Thursday. Yes. So that won't be a surprise. Two nights homework. It's assignment number 34. It's problems three and four. You should write these down or circle them in the packet. And now you might be thinking, two problems. That's not bad. You know, it's kind of my speed. Um, if you actually find them, you will see that they are labeled like A through W. Okay. No, not A through W. It's like A through E. Okay. These are excellent practice for the multiple choice as well as the free response portion of the test on Thursday. Both of these problems, they are going to push your smarticle particles. Abraham's going to email me at 10.30 at night while I'm watching Supernatural while I'm trying to shut down for the evening. And I'll email him something and we'll carry on. Okay, these are going to push your smarticle particles. For those of you that still have your particle particles. All right, while we're in the business of pushing the particle particles, we've got 30 minutes to get you ready for excellence on the quiz that is going to change your grade. It is going to change your grades. I'm on page 41. Today's little quiz is all about free response. It is all about your writing. What I want you to do, on page 41, read through this problem, mark this up, make sure you know what you're doing. We're going to go three minutes completely on your own on part A. Okay. Here's the packet. Let's take out an index card and write your name on it and how many you get correct. score so far out of both classes.
y to the f of x be a function defined by the closed interval negative 5 to 5. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f is shown above. This is f prime. We're not going to get fooled by that. Determine the x coordinates where f has a horizontal tangent line. So let's start there. f has a horizontal tangent line. What does that mean? You have the graph of f prime. You don't have the graph of f. How do you know, Jackie, that f has a horizontal tangent line? Because of the zeros that, that f of prime has. Right. f has a horizontal tangent line if f prime is going to be equal to zero. Great. Okay. Good. Yeah. You've probably earned your first point. Now, how many? Three. Three? Yeah. Okay. Carlos, which ones do you see? Where do, where do you see that f prime is equal to zero? At x equals negative 3. At x equals positive 3. You agree? Mm -hmm. X equals negative 3. I agree with that one. Yeah. This guy over here is x equals 2, not x equals 3. And x equals 3.5 or something. And now this last one really messed up the last class period. It's not 4. It's 3 point something. I heard some folks over here say it's 3.5, right? I would hope that everyone knows this is going to be three-point mystery, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And we've not really done much with this, but you can't just guesstimate it. You can't just say, I think it's 3.5 or I think it's 3.7. There's something deeper. There's something that is really kind about this graph. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's a line is a gift. I'm not going to tell anybody. You could find the slope. How would finding the slope help? Okay, so what's the slope? What's the slope for this particular line? It passes through the points 3, negative 1, and 5, comma 4. We've got 3, negative 1 down here. We've got the point 5, comma 4. You guys said find the slope. Okay, find the slope. The slope is 4 minus negative 1 over 5 minus 3, what is that, 3 halves? Great, that's the slope, but I need to know the x value where we have a root. Okay, so it sounds like you're saying like use your slope, so you go like rise 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2, oh bummer, I missed the root. Kevin, what do you think? You know the slope. Could you get me the equation for the y? You could say it's y equals three halves. I'm thinking like x minus three minus one. I already I know the slope of the line. I know a point on the line. What I need is the root. Set this equation equal to zero. Basically, you're saying where is the line equal to zero? And I realize we haven't done that in a while, but this is an Algebra 1 skill. This is not beyond our abilities. Yes, sir? Is it five halves? Yeah, five halves? Yeah, three oh, four three minus three. negative one. Oh, so awkward. Five halves, five halves, five halves. Thanks for being smarter than I am. Everybody okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So if I solve this out correctly, I'm going to add one. I'm going to multiply by two over five. I think if everything goes well, you're going to get 3.4. But what you need is you need the x value. Okay. So x equals negative 3, x equals 2, x equals 3.4. I think coming up with the 3.4 is way tricky. Not what you would expect. I hope the next part is easy, though. For these x coordinates, indicate whether f is going to have a maximum, a minimum, or neither. Take a minute with the folks that are around you. Max, min, neither, justify it. Mm -hmm. Max, min, or neither. Okay, eavesdropping on the conversations. I heard just about everybody knows what's happening at x equals negative 3. F has a, at x equals negative 3, F has a relative min because, what's F prime doing? Uh-oh, uh-oh. 
What's happening at negative three? We were below, now we're above. F prime changes negative to positive, that's why we'd say that we have a min. What about at x equals two? Negative. F has, we're changing from positive to negative, so you have a relative max because f prime changes from positive to negative. And at 3.4? Min. min. We're going to have to have a min because you're changing from below to above. So you could write it out again at 3.4. f prime has a relative min because f prime changes negative to positive. Or maybe you just tack on the 3.4. You could say like at 3.4 and x equals negative 3. f has mins because we went from negative to positive. All the friends are okay? Mm -hmm. I think from here, you guys are fine to finish off B, C, and D. Take seven minutes, see what you can do. Uh, you've got cups in the middle of the table. The cups are going to be how you indicate the level of support you need. Everybody's back on green. Everybody's cup is on green. Green, you're doing well. No, you're on green, Roberto. Okay, whoever is, whoever's head is closest to the floor. You're the short one in the group. You're in control of the cups. You're the only one that touches the cups. Roberto, if you have a question, don't call me over. The person who is controlling the cups is going to be the one to say, gosh, our whole group is stuck. Green, you're good. Yellow, you've got a clarifying question. Red, crisis. No one knows anything at all. You're doomed for failure. Otherwise known as, I'll see you again next year. Seven minutes, Shorty's here in control. How do you know when the graph is concave? What? How do you know it's concave? You can't possibly be on red yet, you all haven't done anything. We're back on green. Back on green. No, start positive, Ashley. Yeah, if F is negative, then you're going to No brackets at the negative 5. And then you will be between the parentheses and the parentheses. And then 1 will be from the points that give you 5. And then brackets. Because the people who are negative, they will be negative. They will be negative. They will be Identify the point or the intervals, and you give me a reason. I don't need a paragraph. In fact, 
the more you write, the greater the chances you're going to write yourself out. I I would accept where I can so you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and then you plug it into the yeah, also so 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 what it could so 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 That's your justification, first point. And then that happens from negative 5 to 0. And it happens from 3 to 5. That's the second point. Easy peasy. Okay. Ash, um, not Ashley, sorry. Mr. Hold on one second. Part B, if you use brackets, all right, Carlos, hold on. If you choose to use brackets, you're going to be okay, too. You can't put parentheses? But you can use parentheses or you can use brackets. Increasing and decreasing, this is where the college board, they're pretty flexible. Okay, can you turn the camera so that we're good over here? Okay, part C, everyone seems to be writing it, running into the same problem. You want the equation of the tangent line. And everybody's focused in on the fact that you know f of negative 1 is equal to 2. So that's your point on the tangent line. Okay? Mm -hmm. You've got the point. What are you missing? 
so the slope. You need the slope. The slope is f prime of negative one. That's what the derivative means. The derivative is always meant to a slope of the tangent line. Well, to get the slope of the tangent line, I have the graph of f prime in front of me. So what I need to know is what is f prime at negative 1. I need the y value here. And so the hope was that the thoughts that we had over in part A were coming up with the equation of the line would help you figure out what's going on over here. So let's get the equation for this line. The slope of the line, I can do 2 minus 0, 0 minus negative 3. I think the slope is 2 thirds? Yes, sir. Okay, that's not f prime of negative 1. That's the slope of this line. What's the equation for the line? 2 thirds x minus one. Depending on how you want to do it, maybe you want to use this point, but you've got the y, the y intercept, so why not just use y equals 2 thirds x plus 2? So what's f prime of negative 1? If you plug it in, 2 thirds times negative 1 plus 2 should be 4 thirds. Does that even feel right? Could it be 4 thirds? Yes. Yes. Look at the graph. Because that's 1 point something. Right. We know, because we're above that first tick mark, but not up here, that it's 1 point something. You wouldn't have guessed 4 thirds, but I'll tell you that it is 4 thirds. Okay, equation of the tangent line then is going to be L of x is going to be 4 thirds. x minus negative 1 plus 2 is going to be x plus 1 plus 2. What I hope is that this is the really easy part at this point, writing the equation of a tangent line. I heard just about everybody there like, oh, I need a point and a slope, and then probably coming up with the slope that was the tough part. What is the equation? Mm -hmm. x minus x plus All right, keep going. See what you can do in part B. Mm -hmm. So x1 would be like the x on a point. Where's the x1? Well, that one was zero. No, but he took the I like equals four. Is it going to be x1 minus 1? Ashley, you talking about this? Yes. After you get the... The equation is y equals m x minus x1 plus y1. x1 is going to be 0? No, no, no. Your point is a negative 1, 2. Oh. around and saw a lot of folks who, came, who are doing well with the estimate and the notation for the estimate. Delia, if I could freeze you for a little bit. Carlos, you okay there? Okay. I want an estimate for f of negative 0 0.8. I want to use my tangent line. We always use tangent lines to come up with the approximation. 
So I saw most folks have on their paper f of negative 0 0.8. Gosh, how are we going to find that? You just plug into the tangent line. So it's going to be 4 thirds times negative 0 0.8 plus 1 plus 2. What is that? I don't care. No one cares on the free response. You leave it. I've heard good conversation, but I haven't heard anybody that actually knows whether this is an overestimate or an underestimate. To figure out overestimate or underestimate, you have to know about concavity. If you know, hold stay with me for a second. If you know that the graph of f is concave up, what do we know about the estimate? Under. Right, imagine it's concave up. All those tangent lines are below the graph, so you have an underestimate. So if your graph is concave down, you have an overestimate. Roberto, what do we know about the graph of f? f prime because f is what we're approximating. You have to talk to me about concavity of f, the graph you don't see. How do you know f is concave up? f prime is increasing. f prime is increasing, and he's right. f prime is increasing, but you have to tell me the interval. f And now here's where you need to be careful. From where to where? There's two things in particular that I'm looking for. The point of tangency and the point you're approximating. So from x equals negative 1 to x equals negative 0 0.8. This is the point that I'm using to build the line. This is the point that I'm approximating. What do we know about the graph of f? F is concave up y. F prime, is F prime is increasing. If you're not sure where I'm looking, I'm looking from like right here to somewhere over here. That on that little interval, F prime is increasing, which means F is concave up. So those tangent lines, what do we know? Tangent lines are under estimates. Okay. Nice. You have to give me the interval. If you don't give me the interval, you're out. You have to make this connection between how the derivative behaves and the concavity of the graph that you don't see. It's never going to be about the graph that you see. And then lastly, get me to those tangent lines. You need all the things. All the friends are okay? Okay, we get five minutes until we start the quiz. On the this one we're just going to do together from start to finish. I've got a little awkward page spacing that happened here. So sad. I'm at the top of page 43. One of the last places I see you guys getting your butts whipped on a pretty regular basis right now is when it comes to anything involving an antiderivative. So, let's take a look at this guy here. Same graph. You might want a marker for this. We're still looking at f prime. What I need is for to sketch the graph of little f. So little f, the antiderivative. So in black, I'm going to talk about f prime. In red, I'm going to talk about little f, the antiderivative. Hey, Juan. You okay? Good. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we know the graph of f passes through the point negative 3, negative 2. On the same axis as f prime, sketch the graph of little f. So I already know something about little f. Oh, hold on. It passes through the point negative 3, negative 2. Little f is the graph that you don't see. No one sees little f. I've told you one little thing. It passes through the point negative 3, negative 2. What you need to be able to do is tell me things about f prime and how that helps you to get to f. <clears throat> yeah, one. F one. Jose, Jose, sorry. <laughs> I'd, I'd get there eventually. Okay, Jose, what do you know? Uh, this is zero on x negative three. At x equals negative three, f prime has a root. That's true. So what about little f? It's a maximum or a minimum. It's a maximum or it's a minimum. Can we be more specific? Horizontal tangent. 
There's a horizontal tangent line, but look at the graph of F prime. Look at what's happening here. A this is a minimum. It has to be a minimum. Here's what I, what I like to do. I like to think about this on an interval. From this point until negative 3, I know that F prime is negative and at the same time increasing. Oh, that was awkward. That's supposed to be in black. Negative and increasing. I know, I know, I know. Negative and increasing. If F prime is negative and increasing, what has to be true about F? F prime is negative. What's true about F? F is decreasing. F prime is increasing, so F has to be not positive. We're going in the wrong, you guys are going in the wrong direction. Concave up. Concave up. F is the original function, F prime is the derivative. So if F is decreasing, the derivative is negative. I think we're okay with that. But if F is concave up, then the derivative is increasing. So I need to draw F so that it's decreasing and concave up. Can you guys show me that? What does that look like? Decreasing and concave up at the same time. Everybody seems to be drawing like that guy there. Okay, so decreasing concave up, passing through negative 3, negative 2. That's all I need. Okay, you get about one more minute. Let's look on this next interval. Let's take 30 seconds. What do you know about F prime? What does that tell you about F? Yes. Uh, you kind of confused me. Write that from where x equals negative 3 is going to have a relative minimum, right? You're going to have to have a relative minimum because F prime changed from negative to positive. Relative minimum, so that means x equals 2 is going to be maximum, right? At x, x equals 2, we're going to see a maximum. True. All right, negative 3 to 0. I'm hearing a lot of folks. F prime is positive. And F prime is? Increasing. Increasing. So what does little f have to look like? Increasing and concave up. So increasing and concave up, like looking like that. Which means, guess what? There is a relative min at x equals negative 3, just like you knew there would be. The next interval I might be interested in is this guy over here, where I see that f prime is, what is that, positive and decreasing. f prime positive and decreasing, little f. f prime is positive and decreasing. Little f has to be increasing concave down. Increasing concave down looks like looks like that. What just happened at x equals zero? Point of inflection. You changed your concavity. You have a point of inflection at x equals zero, and you would just finish it off. Okay. I feel like we made some good progress there. Okay. Tonight's homework, you guys know, is assignment 34, problems 3 and 4. I'm going to pass out the quiz. We're going to start the quiz right now. We've got 12 minutes. That's all that you're going to get. Don't ask for anything else. Hey, Jackie, we can turn off the camera. Hi, Ashley. You want me to turn off the camera? Yeah. Okay.